you're traveling through another podcast. A podcast not only of reviewing and discussing, but of discovery. A journey into a wondrous show whose boundaries are that of imagination. That's the RSS feed up ahead. Your next stop, Anthology. Hello and welcome to Anthology, presented by ObsessiveViewer.com. I'm your host, Matt Hurt, and if this is your first time listening, Anthology is one man's examination of the Twilight Zone as a first-time viewer. Each podcast, I share my first impressions, analysis, and overall thoughts on Rod Serling's iconic series, one episode at a time. I also cover modern anthology science fiction shows such as Black Mirror and Jordan, the Jordan Peele-produced Twilight Zone reboot and bonus episode review series. You can find more of Anthology as well as a full episode archive at AnthologyPod.com. And if you want to contact me, you can use the Facebook page at facebook.com slash anthology pod. Tweet me at OV anthology pod uh, or send me an email at matt at obsessive viewer.com. And so today is a special day on the podcast because we are wrapping up our my coverage of season two of the original Twilight Zone. And I have returning guest um, Brandon Cruz from Submitted for Your Approval, a Twilight Zone podcast, and Interdimensional RSS, a Rick and Morty podcast, the unofficial Rick and Morty podcast, and uh, and Apathetic Enthusiasm. Uh, Brandon, how are you doing, bud? Hey, I am doing fantastic. <laughs> uh, nice. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I'm doing, I'm doing great, man. It was, uh, we, we've been, we've been talking for a few minutes here now already, mm-hmm. and it just, it's, it's so good to talk to you again i know uh, right it, it, it's it's always it's always a joy to talk mm-hmm. to you because you're, you're always you're always so friendly and and oh. amiable i love it i amiable. i do what i can that's right sure yeah amiable uh, yeah i it's guess supposed I think. it's supposed to be uh very very flattering because you're you're the best oh nice well thank you i i really appreciate it um i will just go ahead and say that i i definitely bring out the big guns when i talk to you so that is why i'm so amiable um <laughs> So <laughs> again, I hope that's the, the right, the right, right, right. Me too. <laughs> I want to Google that. I want to Google that. Nice. Now. Okay. Uh, but yeah, uh, as you said, we were talking on Patreon. Um, just to plug away, if you guys uh, want to check out more exclusive content from this podcast as well as my other podcasts, Obsessive Viewer and Tower Junkies, go and support us on Patreon at patreon.com slash obsessive viewer. Minimum donation of one dollar per month per month gets you access to an rss feed with like 75 uh recordings just from the last couple of years so there's a lot of content for just a dollar so uh go ahead and check that out patreon.com slash obsessive viewer who did you look it up i I did i did uh (laughs) it is it was it was a right it was a right word amiable having or displaying a friendly and pleasant manner nice amiable unassuming fellow is nice the, is the, uh, uh i am i'm flattered and i appreciate that if it was the wrong word i was going to just just rip into you and just be very angry <laughs> get off my show yes. get out here. get the get out of here right now <laughs> uh no never so brandon you were on episode 32 of anthology i forgot the name of my own podcast um back when i did my season one wrap up and now three years later um because it's taken me three years to review season two uh you're back uh how you been these last three years and i've guessed it on your podcast which i appreciate and thank you again yeah no they, well, thank, thank you and i'm gonna have to have you back on too because mm-hmm. i need any any more guests <laughs> and i love you as a guest so oh, nice. uh the last 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 uh, episode you were on was uh, back. The uh, still years valley. Over the- still valley. It's still valley. Ah, yeah. it's still valley. Yeah, yeah. Right. Uh, yeah. So having you on is is great. It, it has it has been a long time since I've been on this show. Mm-hmm. Uh, man, it three three. What a difference three years makes. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah. It's uh, it's nuts, uh, especially with everything going on. Um, just the last. Uh, like the last four months seems like three years. It, it really does. It's it seriously does. Um, and uh, yeah, I didn't ask you on Patreon, but how are you doing with all of this stuff, like the COVID stuff and everything else that's going on in the world? Yeah, well, uh, it's it's good because uh, we we talked a little bit about it. Teleworking means I have I should have more time <laughs> right. at home <laughs> to, uh, to do some side stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, it it doesn't necessarily, but no, uh, everything everything is good here on 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 this end from 
from from that perspective. Nice. <laughs> uh, yeah. How, how I didn't I didn't ask you oh. how things are from your perspective. Oh, Matt. absolutely horrible. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Things are going pretty well. Uh, working from home is great. Um, I have experience working from home because before I was in my current position, I was working in, in the call center from home. And it's yeah. nice that I'm now working from home in a position where people aren't yelling at me all day. <laughs> so that's definitely a plus. Um, and at this point, as with anything else, like just the repetition of doing it, like for so long, it's like, it's, it's become normal. Like I'm, I'm comfortable with it and everything. Um, right. Although it's been several months at this point and I just, I just now realized like, oh, I, I can take my laptop onto my balcony and just sit on the balcony and do work. Like, why <laughs> haven't I been doing this every day? <laughs> so, uh, yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I'm right there with you. When, when I'm at home, the first couple hours, well, Tampa's getting warm now. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, but the, you know, but April, March, Sit sit out there with a cup of coffee for a couple yes. hours. And all the 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 wife and kid are asleep. Like yes, <laughs> this is this is the this is the life here. That's perfect. I uh, I also splurged and bought a new coffee maker, and like that's also Ooh. perfect because I'll just like it syncs with my Amazon Echo, and I'll just be like, I'll set it to turn on uh, at a certain time, so I'll like wake up to the smell of coffee, and I'm like, oh, this is perfect. And then I'll it, work. It's safe in your Alexa? <laughs> yep. Yep. What? Yep. What eighth age nonsense is this? <laughs> right. <laughs> it's uh it's pretty sweet. It's pretty sweet. The coffee I've been getting is just decent, but it's uh it's pretty it's pretty good. Um yeah, so that's that's been good. And also don't tell my employer, but I <laughs> I'm able to like edit the podcast nice edit the podcast and everything while i'm working um so like today i just edited the episode that's going to come out after this episode of anthology um which i'm super excited about but yeah um so yeah <laughs> uh, you know, you know there were, oh sorry go ahead. oh i was just gonna say it's working out pretty well that's good yeah i i i would openly say that i edit my podcasts mm -hmm. uh while while i'm home teleworking mm -hmm. but i the, the people at work listen to listen to my shows. Oh yeah, like, for the Rick and Morty podcast, mm -hmm. people who don't watch Rick and Morty have never seen an episode. Still listen to the podcast for some reason. Wow, um, just because they know you. Yeah, and and I and I think I've talked shit about oh. uh, one or two of them, <laughs> nice. oh, but but they they still they still talk to me. So wow, can you <laughs> introduce me to them so that I can make them listen to my stuff? <laughs> Uh, I can, I, I try to convince them not to listen to my stuff. So, nice. well, if you want to throw my links at them, please do. <laughs> you, you got it. You got it. I'm nice. on it. Nice. Um, <laughs> so yeah, so three years we talked about, uh, season one. I've been on your show talking about still Valley. Um, I do want to mention that it, where are you at in season three in your show? Um, uh, season three, I'm at, uh, quality of mercy. So that's the, okay. uh, it's episode 14 of, of season three. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. And season three has like 30 yeah, some odd 30. Jeez. Yeah. 36. <laughs> okay. Um, I was going to throw my hat in to be on like whenever you relaunch and everything. Um, one of my favorite things about coming on your show is that I get to jump ahead in my viewing <laughs> because like I, I'm just going in chronological order. So, um, yeah, I would love to be on your show for really any, any episode, but I did, one of my listeners did suggest that I, uh, skip ahead to season four, given the current like political climate and everything and watch he's back. I think, um, uh, when the season four, he's alive. Yeah. Right. Yeah. He's alive. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, so if that comes up at any point, I would be happy to join you on that. But I don't want to invite myself onto the show. So, yeah. Uh, don't, don't, don't even trip, dog. Uh, nice. I don't know if you heard the typing in the background, but that was, uh, that was me locking you in. Nice. Nice. Awesome. He's a lot. <laughs> awesome. And I, and I, and I, and I want to, I want to just throw this out there. Mm -hmm. I, I had this, these spreadsheets set up when I, when I, uh, was full, full bore on the show. Yeah. Uh, and it had air dates for when the podcast episode was meant to air originally. <laughs> that that is a dangerous game. 
that do, is do, very dangerous. Do you know what the date is? Do you know what the original date is? Oh, no. No, 6 November 2016. Oh, God. For that episode specifically? For that episode in season four. Oh, my God. I will say I have, I think I have like the same thing, like the same, I like the same thing in my uh, notes and everything because I, let me actually go all the way back because <laughs> I had like show coverage schedule. No, that's not the note. Um, I had, let's see, plans, the outer limits, alternate plans. Jeez. Uh, this is great podcasting. <laughs> <laughs> new plans because i've revamped the show so many times yeah and like it's it's been like i really love doing the show oh, okay here it is anthology release schedule <laughs> um uh oh jesus okay, okay so this note was created can i see when it was created um it was created a while ago. I can't tell when, but uh, like anthology season one covering the first season was going to be August to December of 2015. And like this episode here. Uh-huh. So the end of season two was originally going to be, um, uh, it was going to run from February to May of 2016. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So good, good job us. Yep. Yep. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, so, huh, well, it is what it is, but... Uh, better, better late than never, Matt. Exactly, exactly. Um, so, yeah, so how how are your podcasts and everything? And feel free to tell our listeners uh, where like where they can find each of your shows and kind of give a, a log line for each of your shows. Oh, oh, no. Oh, no. Uh, okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll, try, I'll, try, I'll try to run through them. Apathetic Enthusiasm, uh, you can go to apatheticenthusiasm.com for that. As well as, as submitted for your approval to add some podcast, uh, which I mean you don't you don't have to because clearly uh, I, I haven't made any episodes of that. <laughs> but uh, aesthetic enthusiasm, uh, it's it's the show that the 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 show that I started podcasting with way back in 2015 with mm-hmm. my good friend Travis, and that that's that's gone through so many iterations, but now it's basically uh, a, a show for us to talk about like what we're what we're playing, what we're watching. Shooting the shit. We talked. We talked about my foray into gardening. Uh, <laughs> next time, next time we talk, I'll, I'll probably talk about fungus gnats, which is a thing. Okay. Who knew? In <laughs> uh, so so you can go go. I, that doesn't sound that interesting, but go check it out if, if you want. <laughs> nice. Right on. Uh, uh, Submit it for your approval. The Twilight Zone podcast. Uh, that that is the show that uh, I it was the first spinoff of. of Apathetic enthusiasm, where I, I just I wanted to I wanted to cover all of the episodes of the Twilight Zone, and and invite people that I I knew, folks that I didn't know, and now I'm friends with. Hello, nice, nice. hello, I, again, <laughs> Matt. Um, and and get and get perspective from a bunch of different folks, uh, for what made makes the Twilight Zone such a, a great and lasting uh, show for nice. for folks to watch, um, and obviously remade again with Jordan Peele and and the in the executive producer role. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, a uh, bunch of different guests, a bunch of incredible guests, uh, yourself included, obvi- obviously. Thank you. <laughs> and, uh, hopefully, I can, hopefully I can get back into the habit of doing that because um, I do need to interview some folks. Hmm. And, and then finally, uh, finally, the, the, the one, the podcast that is actually successful <laughs> is Interdimensional RSS, the unofficial Rick and Morty podcast. Uh, that started... <laughs> That started in between Rick and Morty just finished season four. We started it af- in the break between season two and season three, mm. and uh, we 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 started in 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 preparation for season three, and then there was like still like six months before it actually started. Season three aired, and then two years later, season four came on, huh. and we just we just hit our. Our hundred and first episode. Nice. Of the Congratulations. Show. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. We had, we had, we, uh, we, we obviously, we, we went over all of the, uh, the episodes of the show itself. Mm-hmm. We've done character studies of the individual, individual characters. Uh, we've had interviews with, with people from the show, uh, nice. di- directors, uh, writers, the composer, Ryan Elder, um, nice. and, and folk. Folks even like associated with the show or, mm-hmm. or just fans of the show themselves. Uh, so we, we, I mean, we, we cover the show in its entirety, mm-hmm. whether it's the show or it's semi pertinent, whether it's like news or merchandise or 
uh, somebody said something about Rick and Morty and we just want to bullshit because we need content, you know? Nice. Uh, but like uh, that. that that one is uh, at Rick and Morty, uh, www.rickandmortypod.com. Sweet. Uh, that one's much, that's, yeah, that's self-explanatory. <laughs> nice. That's awesome. Well, congratulations on that. Like, I know that it's, uh, I mean, it, it's gotten pretty big, um, that that show, and it's, uh, I'm super happy for you. Yeah. And yeah. I, I find it really funny how the, like, like our podcast journeys have kind of mirrored each other in a weird way. Like, you started with Apathetic Enthusiasm. I started with Obsessive Viewer. You did, uh, 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 wow. <laughs> submitted for your approval. I think I did that once before and it's right there. Uh, you did Submitted for your approval. I did Anthology and then now you're doing Rick and Morty and I'm doing Tower Junkies. Um, and Tower Junkies is not as successful as Rick and Morty. I will tell you that, but it's also wildly inconsistent and, uh, uh, it's more just an, ex- an excuse for me and Tiny to talk about our Stephen King fandom. So, yeah. So, so, well, but, but you've, you've had, yeah, you, you've had retweets from, uh, from the, the Stephen King himself, right? Did you? He, I, yes, he, or, well, or he, like it, he retweeted a tweet that Mike Flanagan responded right. to me. So, right. and like, I was like, Oh my God, Stephen King has read something that I wrote. Um, <laughs> and, and it was like a deep cut nerdy thing of like, Oh, this, this little thing in the background of Dr. Sleep is a reference to the dark tower series. Can you confirm Mike Flanagan? And he's like, Oh yeah, absolutely. That was 100% intentional. And I'm like, Oh my God. Hey. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. So, that's, that's, okay. that's so cool, man. That's yeah. The- I, uh, yeah, it's, that's one of the things that's super fun about, uh, doing this, uh, this kind of nonsense. Um, so yeah. Um, yeah. So we're here to talk about season two of the twilight zone, uh, the original series. And I don't have like very specific notes. I do have like bullet points and stuff that I shared with you and everything. Um, yeah. so, Kind of just to start out, do you want to talk about just the season overall? I know that it's probably probably been a while um, since you've really seen all the episodes, but uh, how did you feel about season two overall in uh, comparison to season one? Uh, so season season two, I, I, I liked, I mean, I, I, I like all of the seasons. Uh, season four, not as much, only because I don't have as much uh, experience with it, uh, mm-hmm. because... You know, on Netflix, you can get all the seasons except right. season four, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, but but when it comes to season two, they they have a lot of solid episodes, and and some episodes that I didn't realize didn't uh, going back to it because I, I haven't I haven't rewatched it really. Mm-hmm. Uh, I didn't when we scheduled this, I didn't have a chance to go through all uh, twenty nine <laughs> right. episodes of of uh, season two. But mm-hmm. like looking back at the list, I'm like there's some really strong episodes in here. Um, but I will say that there's also, uh, like some, uh, beginnings of, of repetition maybe, uh, yeah. as, as far as, as far as thematic, even, even like King nine will not return. Right. It's, mm. it's almost a, a variation of where is everybody, which is the, which is the, the pilot episode. Right. Absolutely. Oh Yeah. And, uh, so, so other, other than that, you know, like some of my favorite episodes of the Twilight Zone, Mm -hmm. the greatest hits of the Twilight Zone are in this season. Nice. Uh, What, what, what about you? I I know you were, you're watching it. You, Mm -hmm. you weren't a a Twilight Zone expert necessarily. Right. Uh, Or at all. (laughs) (laughs) At at all. I mean, you're, you're, you're getting to be there now. I, I, yeah. (laughs) What is, what is, what is yours? And what is, what's your take on, on, Season two compared to season one. So it's interesting because season one was such a kind of novel experience for me because that was my, I mean, not to say that it's any different from everyone else, but like it was my introduction to the Twilight Zone and I watched it chronologically. I analyzed each episode and it took me a long time to do that, but I did it anyway. But, um, so a lot of those like big moments in season one just really stood out and that was my, that my that was my introduction to the Twilight Zone in that it was introducing me to what to expect. And I was like, I came out of season one thinking like, okay, this is the show. This is what it is. This is what I should expect coming going forward. So season two has the kind of 
difficult job of keeping itself on par with season one and either elevating it or going lower than it. And like, that's a kind of difficult position for that, for that, for the show to be in and really any show. But, uh, I would say season two overall, I really think, uh, was on par with season one, maybe a little bit better for me. Um, just because, a lot of the big episodes, the good, like the episodes that stand out to me, they really stand out to me. And I don't, the thing that I struggle with is I don't know if that is due to me, um, just getting more comfortable with analyzing the show over and over again and like watching the episodes and like figuring out my voice as a critic of the show or if it's because the show is genuinely like, improved over what was an incredible first season. So um, that's kind of a non-answer, but I would say on par with season one, maybe a little bit better. I will say that the videotaped episodes were a bit of a detriment. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They were kind of hard to watch. They'll get you. They'll get yep. you every... <laughs> yeah. I I think that I, I think that little bit of is, is interesting that, mm-hmm. that you you liked a little bit more than, than season one and mm-hmm. uh, whether or not that's, that's because your familiarity with it. Right. Uh, be, because that, that that was one of the things that I always wanted to get out of maybe like a, an, an unspoken uh, goal of doing S4YA and, and having a bunch of people watch the show is, is it good because the familiarity exists and it's mm-hmm. something I grew up with or is it, or is it, or is it objectively good uh, because it's there, it's good storytelling and, and it's good writing. Mm-hmm. Uh and uh, so I, I continue to be interested in in you moving forward. Oh. If if that if it continues to get better, or if you start to see uh, again more repeats, if right. you will, and you're like, okay, all right, because <laughs> yeah. there there is an episode in in season three, uh, the shelter. Uh, I'm which, very excited for that episode, but yeah, okay. which which I I actually prefer to it's it's commonly. Uh, compared to episode of the uh, uh, monster video on Maple Street. Oh, okay, nice. I, yeah. <laughs> my like, I, I was know, like, I spoil anything? Oh no, 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 you're fine. Because um, nah, no, I know, no. I know, like the basic plot of the shelter. But my kind of road into that, the reason why I'm so excited about it is because. The episode of The Simpsons, Bart's Comet, uh, does a riff on that, and I'm just really excited to get that reference. Um, oh. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, that's, that's what I'm excited about. Um, I, need, I need to watch Bart's comment. I yeah. I be, I'm like 99 percent sure that it's a reference to that. Um, okay. Yeah. Um, I'm yeah. on it. Nice, nice. Uh, yeah, and I'm I'm just super uh, excited to get to season three and everything. Um, and uh, that's that's very amiable of you to say that you're uh, eager for my uh, continued uh, journey through the Twilight Zone. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm big on knowing others, other like intellectual empathy. I guess is like under understanding others' perceptions of, of things. That sounds and, like the title for your fourth podcast: <laughs> intellectual <laughs> empathy. Don't, uh, don't, don't, don't do that. To me. I, I can't handle the ones I have. <laughs> uh, yeah, same, same here. <laughs> <laughs> But no, it's, I think I, I really do think that that's cool, and that's why I, I love what you're doing uh, doing here. All right on. Uh, what? Uh, so I, I don't I don't necessarily want to to push you anything, but oh no, like, go right ahead. Like what? Like what episodes uh, in in the season kind of jumped out at you? Like in season two? Yeah, <laughs> season two. Like in. And in pop culture, you know, in pop culture, like there, you've seen a lot of these references are already. Mm-hmm. And, and, uh, so then I'll follow up with, did, did pop culture ruin you? And is, nice. is that why they popped it out for you? Okay. Yeah. That's, that's a great question. So the big one that I'm loading up the full episode list now, um, <laughs> the big one from season two, uh, there were a couple that were really big that, that kind of jumped out and, when I was going into season two because of the pop culture-ness of them. So there was, um, Eye of the Beholder was a big one. And, uh, let's see. And, um, oh, here it is. <laughs> Will the Real Martian please stand up? 
And uh, those were kind of those were probably the two biggest ones from the season that that jumped out to me from a pop culture standpoint. And uh, I will say that neither one of them were ruined. In fact, uh, well, the real Martian, please stand up, was kind of a, a very nice surprise because um, obviously, by the way, we're going to be spoiling season two of the Twilight Zone. If you're listening this far into anthology, you're spoiled. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah. But the reveal at the end that not only is Barney Phillips uh an alien but uh what's his face is is the actual Martian. Um like all I knew from that episode was the the eye and the forehead thing. And so when the guy comes back and he's like, "Oh yeah, you know, um everyone's dead and everything and you see the third arm." I'm like, "Oh, wow. Okay. That's I, that completely recontextualized what I uh, expected from it from pop culture. That, yeah. uh, that, 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 that's interesting. Yeah. Cause the, uh, the, the, the famous shot is, mm-hmm. is the Barney Phillips and the, and the eyeball, yeah. not, uh, not the other guy. Sorry. Right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, not him, not him with the arm. Yep. Uh, so, so when, when, when that, when he walks in, when he, mm-hmm. the, the, the bus, cre- the bus leaves, yeah. he's the only one who walks back in, uh, you know Barney Phillips is is uh is the Venetian. Mm-hmm. Uh, what like what was what was the thought that went through your head? I if I didn't talk, I didn't listen to your I, episodes. I didn't get that from you, but oh no, you're fine. Um, I thought when he when he walked back into the diner, I genuinely just thought that it was just going to end on a note of the dude walking into the diner and Barney Phillips showing that he has the third eye, uh, like. I thought it was just going to be that thing. Like the big reveal was going to be like, oh, well, you know, the reason why the bus is gone is because I'm the alien. Ha, ah, the end. Um, oh, like like the dude walks in, somehow sur- survives, whatever. Yeah. And he's like, ha, yeah, they were looking for the <laughs> alien on that bus. He wasn't there. He was, it was me. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, That's exactly what I thought it was going to be. Um and also, I was just really surprised at how dark that ending is. Like, the cops and the bus full of people are all dead. Um, it's, uh, it's pretty bleak. Pretty bleak. Uh, for an episode that's actually pretty fun. Um, so, yeah. Kind of interesting. Poor, poor cops. Poor. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh, then, yeah, and then Eye of the Beholder was a big one. Um, I knew the ending of it. The thing that I didn't know going into it was that it had this um fascist like dictator um uh totalitarian government thing or or the the um that whole aspect of it so like when when the uh i don't remember what they called him the the leader is on the screen and everything and he's yelling about conformity and we must conform and ah, ah. um i was like oh oh okay this is this is this is a much richer episode than I was expecting because I just expected it to be, uh, oh, hey, she's actually beautiful, but everyone else is, uh, you know, um, crazy face people. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, uh, uh, pig, pig face people? Yeah, pig face. Yeah. Uh, so that was, that was a pretty, that was a pretty cool, uh, episode. Yeah. They don't, they don't, they don't, when, when retrospects of that show, mm-hmm. uh, or that episode, they they don't really harp too much on the on the fascism aspects right. of it, uh, and I wonder I, I do kind of wonder why because I guess because the, the the twist is what then ends up being the focus on yeah and and any and even at the end when uh, she's with more of her kind mm-hmm. and uh, they're they're taking care of her it, it kind of ends on like a like a hopeful note like a happy yeah. note yeah but the but there's just like with will the real Mar- Martian stand up? There's still there's still a darkness there. Yeah. Oh yeah. Like no one's toppling that government ever. Um, no. Yeah. No. She's just like, going to a camp <laughs> with other beautiful people. Yeah. Oh. Ooh. Yeah. By the way, uh, fascism. Right. Yep. <laughs> um, and then a big thing at the end of the season, like, and it's the freshest in my mind, is the obsolete man just. It blew me away. Like that episode is fantastic. And what I love about that in relation to Eye of the Beholder is how it takes that kind of fascist backdrop and just expands it. Like it is, it is about this type of government and everything and this battle of wits between these two men. It's just, it's so good. So good. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the, the, the cinematography mm-hmm. and the staging of Obsolete Man 
just yeah. outstanding. Some of the best I've ever seen of anything ever. <laughs> yeah, and, and 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 even with the uh, uh, what the what is a thematic movement? What is it? Um, like, well, at the end when they're like uh, obsolete, and oh, they're all like, yeah. Um, I don't, yeah, I don't, the, style. yeah, yeah, like the, um, they're swarming him and everything and humming and like, that's, that was legitimately terrifying to me. Um, just super creepy. Um, Did, yeah. Now, now here's, here's, a, here's a question for you. Okay. Uh, oh, or are there any episodes that are famous episodes mm-hmm. that you would consider overrated that Ooh. you episode two or season two that is a good question so let's see i'm, try, I'm trying to get people to stop listening to your show <laughs> well great mother trucker <laughs> right um hmm i don't know how famous it is as uh, partic- in particular but like um Long Distance Call I thought was really good, but it wasn't quite like, it didn't bowl me over too hard. Um, and honestly, the Will the Real Martian Please Stand Up was kind of a little bit, um, that episode was a little bit in the shadow of the Monsters Are Due on Maple Street for me. Because it's kind of, to your point about there being a lot of kind of similarities and, and rehashing of old stuff in, in season two, um, I mean, this is a, story about uh, a group of people that are faced with a very bizarre and secretive thing where they have to turn on everyone that's around them and question everyone around them and see who's the monster. And it's like, it's, it's the, it's, it's the blueprint of it is so similar to the monsters who do on Maple street. And I adored the monsters who do on Maple street. So that kind of tainted that episode for me a little bit. Um, I had yeah. to fight to kind of stop comparing them in my head. Yeah. yeah. I, 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 did, I didn't consider, stop to consider that, but yeah, like makes sense. Uh, when they, when the jukebox starts on its own. Yeah, exactly. And, and people yep. just like, Oh, well, Oh, who is it? Let's start blaming everybody else. <laughs> right. Uh, yep. yeah. Very, very, very similar. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, um, I, 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 I we have our top six, and we have bottom mm-hmm. episodes of season two. Yeah. Uh, so I'll just I'll just spoil one of my my bottom of season two. Okay. And 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 I think I think people will 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 be mad uh, mm-hmm. at me. Uh, <laughs> but not that I don't like the episode, but I think one of the more overrated episodes is Nick of Time with okay. with Chad. Sure. Um, I, I do I do like that episode, mm-hmm. but and I don't know if I'm just comparing it to other Shatner uh, episodes. Sure, but um, that one, I, I they're, they're just they're just something about it. I'm like, cool, yeah. yeah this, this is a thing. Okay, superstition is is bad. It's yeah. good. Yeah, that episode is very kind of ground level. It's not it's not very Twilight Zoney. Per se, I mean, it has that element to it, but it is it is more grounded than the regular episodes are. The other episodes, I would say, um, but it is it's funny you mentioned uh, that we have our top six episodes. Like I have like top six episodes. The reason that it's six is because I could not pick one to drop it down to five. Like I I couldn't. Like that is my list. I I can't I can't pick one that's it's not. <laughs> get 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 to it. Yeah. Uh, and uh, maybe maybe it's not maybe that episode's not bottom bottom uh, bottom of season two. But I it, when I was looking at it last night, I'm like, okay, which which ones are the bottom? Mm-hmm. And uh, it's 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 really easy to pick Mr. Dingle the Strong. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's just it's just the easy one to pick on mm-hmm. uh, because Mr. Dingle is is weak. Exactly. <laughs> uh, so I, I wanted I wanted to try to 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 look at it in a, a little bit different way. But. Okay. Nice. Um, do you want to move on to our favorite moments and endings of season two, or really just whatever? Um, <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, nice. yeah. It's your show. I'm, you Sweet. know, I'm just, I'm, 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 you know, I'm your guest. I just lead, lead the way. I'm just, I'm just happy to be here. Fantastic. Um, so, <laughs> uh, do you want to mention what your favorite moments of season two are? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, will the will real Martian please stand up? Uh, we 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 talked about it. I that the, the reveal at the end. Mm-hmm. I, I just not that just the eye, which is I I, I love the makeup. Yeah. But the 
the arm, the struggling to light the cigarette right. or whatever out of the, the jacket. <laughs> I don't, I, don't know, I just get a tickle out of that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, I got I got to shout out the invaders. Oh yes, yep. Mm-hmm. The the invaders has to be in up there. Uh, oh yeah, because the idea that these little these little bastards are <laughs> my brothers in arms as mm-hmm. uh, as they join the space force. Yep. <laughs> I, I I love that, and that those the, they always creep me out as a kid, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, sure, they're they're toys, but just the 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 silent dread on this this woman this um. Uh, uh, the entire time, and then and then to find out that oh look at look at that it's it's the U.S. government. Yep, that what, what that do you epi- know? Right, that episode blew my mind because I I didn't know hardly anything about it. Um, the only thing that I really knew was that they I knew the design of the invaders, and I think that's basically it. So like watching that episode. First of all, I was struck by the fact that it's it's silent. Like she doesn't say, there's no dialogue that she says throughout the entire episode. And I'm like that is just really like really uh well done and really impressive. And then the reveal at the end that it's that it's, you know, they're that it's the US government and that they're on a different planet and there's giants and I was like I was just blown away by that cuz I did not see that coming. I thought that was really clever um and really fun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What 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 are uh, what about you? Uh, What's your favorite? Let's see. So, um I'll start with with the kind of bottom one on my list, 22. Um the episode itself is fine. Um kind of similar to uh Perchance to Dream in season 1 to an extent. Um but with a c- cougar woman? Uh yes. The the the, the, the dreams, right? The, yeah, the, yeah, yeah, the the cat lady. Yeah, cat lady. Okay, cougar. yeah. I was cougar like, wait, one. cougar? Um. <laughs> Sorry, I've been watching a lot of uh, Pornhub. Uh, oh, you're lately. good. <laughs> I thought you were going to say something completely different, but all right. Um, <laughs> we're a red tube podcast, by the way. Um. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, sorry about the sponsors. <laughs> Oh God! Just kidding. But if you do want to sponsor us, uh, get at me. Matt at obsessviewer dot com. Anyway, um, so uh, the thing that I really liked about twenty two was that the ending with the plane exploding on the run ro- on the runway. Um, I didn't know, and I, I still haven't confirmed this, but um, one of my favorite movies back in the late nineties was Final Destination, and I was like yeah. that. It kind of blew my mind because I had no idea that that movie had any inspiration from the Twilight Zone. Um, even though by concept, it's a pretty Twilight Zone-y, uh, um, kind of concept. And it's funny because Glenn Morgan, like, co-wrote it or wrote on it or wrote, did, had some deal with it. And he is now one of the people that are doing the CBS All Access Twilight Zone. Huh. Um, but anyway, so that was cool. I liked that. Um, the yeah, invaders. Yeah. yeah. Oh, did you have anything on twenty two? Well, no, yeah. It's just you. You. I. I talked to uh, Craig Beam, who, oh, who yeah. did his. He, he was on to talk about twenty two, mm-hmm. uh, and the, and, we, and we talked about that. And, and after I hit that same realization mm-hmm. after so many years of, of seeing that episode, like, oh, that's final. De- that's final destination. That's right. flight one one eighty two. Yep. <laughs> Um, it, it did. So Glenn Morgan, who who co-wrote Final Destination, mm-hmm. has, has you know, I don't know, mm-hmm. has he ever come out and like said like, oh yeah, this was a big uh, inspiration for it, or I don't know. However, I also haven't done my due diligence to look for that, so I don't know. I haven't found anywhere to uh, refute that or confirm it. Okay, it's on my it's on my so, to do list. Nice, nice. Um, <laughs> you'll do all the heavy lifting, and I'll take credit. Um, <laughs> uh, next up, the invaders. I already talked about that, but um, kind of a, a um, what I feel like is kind of a lesser talked about one, at least from my perspective, is the Rip Van Winkle caper. Um, oh. I am. We talked about this last time you were on, but I'm a huge fan of time travel, and this episode is unique because I mean, it's just them. <laughs> Like, if you pick it apart, it makes no sense whatsoever. Like, these guys have stolen gold, and (laughs) their plan is to hibernate for a hundred years and then spend it because the heat has died down. (laughs) Like, there's no consideration of what the world is going to be like in a hundred years. They have nothing. Like, 
it's there's no I I I can't like rationalize it in my head. <laughs> but I I love the ending because just that that ironic twist of fate where it's like, oh, that's weird. He was talking about gold. Gold doesn't mean anything since we learned how to manufacture it. Like, let's go to the, you know, spaceport and stuff and have fun. Um, and that's it. <laughs> <laughs> there, so, there's yeah. so many, there, there's, there's weird implications there. Let's let, first of all, the, the plan to go, to go forward in time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Look, uh, supply and demand had always existed up to, right. to that, that point in time. And like, uh, Inflation mm-hmm. wasn't a new concept um, to, right. to to folks back in the sixties. Mm. So uh, so being like gold, that's always going to be worth the same amount. Right. Yeah, maybe maybe yeah. maybe not. Yeah. It was a it was a gold standard back then. Yeah, that's, hey, uh, true, true. Yeah. Um, uh, but yeah, I thought it was I thought it was the twist at the end was clever. <laughs> yeah. And and then and then the the I I do want to ask this question: the implication that like. Yeah, we learned how to manufacture gold. I mean, what uh, for, to what end? That's not. I, I have no it's, idea. I, it's yeah, not, it's not the strongest of all metals. <laughs> no, nope. like if you're playing Minecraft, sure, it's stronger than than uh, stone. But sure. I mean, you want to use it over a diamond, right? So, yep, yep. But uh, idiots. yeah, I, right. <laughs> And then uh, kind of the two big, well, actually, I need to add one because I didn't include this, but um, the two big ones and then a third one, uh, Shadow Play. Um, Mm. I loved that episode just as a concept. It was so cool. Um, I I love that it is one of those endings that is ambiguous. It's just it resets and he's fated to do this for eternity, it seems. Um, that and just the idea of a time loop is just fascinating to me. Um, how do you feel about Shadow Play? That's uh, that, that's uh, one with Dennis Weaver, right? Where he's in like a, a court yeah. court case. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, I that was one that when I was going over season season two, mm-hmm. uh, that I didn't re- recall. You know, you you see all the the episode titles, and you mm-hmm. know, you have your spreadsheets, and you're like, okay. I think I can go down there at lateness of the hour. I think I remember which one. Trouble with Templeton. Mm-hmm. Which one is that one? Shadow Play was one where I was like, what is that episode about mm-hmm. without seeing any screenshots or anything like that? Right. Uh, and then, and then watching it, uh, being like, oh, you, oh, this is a good one. Why, mm-hmm. why don't I, why don't I know this one? Mm-hmm. Uh, that, that's how I ended up feeling about it after, after I had rewatched it for the, the, the podcast. Nice. Uh, because I, I, I really, I dig that kind of looping mm-hmm. aspect of it. It does, it's very, it's similar in a way to, um, the first season episode with the Nazi on the, the U boat. Judgment Night. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I, I, I do say, I do think that in Shadow Play, he, he doesn't necessarily deserve, uh, being in this loop. I was thinking about that too, because I watched it today. Uh, just, just as a refresher and like, there's no real reason for him to be in this. And that, I mean, that's kind of twisted in its own way. It's, it's harsher than you expect from the twilight zone. Yeah. Poor, poor guy. Yeah. Uh, but I, you know, what, what are you going to do? Dennis Weaver, Why don't right. you go be, go be in duel. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, and something that I talked about on my episode about it, um, cause it was remade in the eighties and I reviewed the eighties version as well. And I kept, like, I haven't gotten this idea out of my head, but I wish that it would have been, I wish that this episode, Shadow Play, was in this, the original series, 80s, 2000s, and the new one. And I wish that they, like, I wish that someone in the 80s could have been like, let's remake Shadow Play and make it uh, in the same continuity. Like, let's make it be like decades later, he's still in this time loop. And then decades later, when we remake the show again, he's still in that time loop. And then decades later or a decade later or two decades later, he's still in that time loop. Like I, I wish that they would have done that, but they didn't. Um, and I, uh, I, I can't that, stop thinking about that. <laughs> that. That is, that is, that is so cool. If somebody, uh, yeah. if somebody in the eighties and, and like a, sh- it, you know, in a way, uh, like how Psycho came out with a uh, Van, what's his face, uh, um, came out 
mm-hmm. shot for shot remake basically of Psycho. Oh yeah, right? yeah. Um, uh, if they did a shot for shot remake in the eighties of mm-hmm. Shadow Play, shot for shot remake in the two thousands, and yes. shot for shot now, it it's it, it's the perfect meta. It it is. On- oh yeah, and I mean they could still do that now in the new series, but. I don't know. It would have just been really cool to have that continuity throughout it, but yeah, whatever. Um, (laughs) Unfortunately, it's not meant to be. Um, Mm. And then the next one on my list is the silence. Um, That episode, like especially just the ending, the reveal at the end that he has severed the nerves to his vocal cords and that the, the other guy never had the money or anything like just the way that all of that comes together. I was like gobsmacked by it. I was like, this is, this is really good. Like this is just really just satisfying. Um, again, it's, it's another like two people kind of battle of wits, um, between two people and everything. And in this case, they both end up losing. <laughs> um, yeah, just really, really satisfying. How did you, how did you respond to the silence? Two, two cheaters, two mm-hmm. cheater. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> watching it, I knew. I, I uh, you know, it's one. It's one of those episodes where I know the ending. I know that the the twist is uh, he, he had done something to himself to mm-hmm. to win the bet. But I always forget whether it's he, he like cut off his tongue oh. or. So that that's why I'm like he's always got the ascot up there. Mm-hmm. I'm like I know it has something to do with it, but the cuts off. Um, but but then it's always the, the it's always a, a a shocker to me that I'm like oh that dude has, doesn't have any money right. It's a, it's a double whammy. <laughs> yep, yep. Um, when I was rewatching it today, I was like I kind of. I can kind of relate to him, the, the general, I guess I think it was his name. Um, mm. because like, <laughs> cause I feel like part of, this is something that I'm putting into it that's not in the episode, but I feel like part of it could be that he's like, okay, well, I'm going to set this bet. And if he does win, I have a whole year to come up with $500,000. I'll be fine. I'll get it to him then. <laughs> and like, that's my way of thinking with everything. <laughs> um, <laughs> as evidenced by the, um, uh, release date plans for anthology <laughs> years ago. It'll be, it'll be good. It'll be yeah. good. Oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You know, if you wait till the last minute, it only takes a minute. That's exactly that's the, nice. That's, I, oh, I like that. That's going to be, that's going to be a, a new motto for me. I think. <laughs> uh, um, yeah. One, one, one thing that always sticks out to me uh, of, of the silence, mm-hmm. uh, I, is the sound design of, of the one piece where the one dude's in the box, mm-hmm. uh, and then the other guy is, is talking to him from, from outside the box. Yeah. And just the, the, just the sound design of, uh, going in through the speaker, mm-hmm. but then when, it, but when it's actually him outside the box and it, it sounds normal, it's yeah. such a, it's a small touch. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a touch that brings an extra level of immersion to the, to the episode. Absolutely. And I don't think I even like, I don't think I even touched on that in my review. And uh, yeah, you're absolutely right. That's awesome. Yeah. The silence. <laughs> and then it's about sound. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, and then the final one that's not on my list is The Obsolete Man. Um, the, all of the ways that Wordsworth uh, throws the words back at the Chancellor. Like when he says, like when he when he's saying, like, oh, you're depriving, you, like you need to face the camera. You're depriving your audience, and um, uh, like step into the light, and just like the turn, like turning it around on him and the state itself is like just so just satisfying, um, and really just incredibly clever writing. Um, God, I really love that episode. Um, Completely. Completely agreed. I, I love that uh, the at the very very beginning because uh, he's a ch- chancellor, right, mm-hmm. or, or whatever his, his title is. That's right. At, at the very beginning, the dude who's announcing uh, Wordsworth incoming is mm-hmm. at the is is a, is at the head of the table, the, the table, whatever. Yeah. And then at the end of the episode, he is the one who's risen to the level of uh, being that the one who claims that they're obsolete. Yep. So so good. Um, yep. There's always, there's always, there's always somebody who's vying for more power. Exactly. Yeah. You know, watch your back in fascism. 
Right. And I was going to say, oh, yeah, in like six months, you're going to be running this podcast and I'll be like gone. I said, I said watch your back, Matt. <laughs> uh yeah so those are my favorite moments and everything did you have any others or do you want to I, I i did i did uh the 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 end of the howling man uh, yeah the 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 very uh werewolf um the, the uh, were, werewolf werewolf of london that, yeah the yeah. just the that that, tra- that transition mm-hmm. uh of, of this man into the devil is, is great and it i i bring it up because i like that moment but also mm-hmm. Uh, in you, you mentioned in Tower Junkies, you oh, covered yeah. Castle Rock, mm-hmm. and in Castle yeah. Rock, there's that, that scene of the Howling Man in the background. Yep, and uh, it's one of my one of my <laughs> one of the things that I'm I find so fascinating about Castle Rock is that uh, the first season is like like the overall plot of the first season is lifted and inspired from the Howling Man, and yeah. then like season two is inspired or, or is similar uh, to, uh, Oh God, I can't even, Oh, like invasion of the body snatchers and stuff. And I'm just sitting there like, this is a Stephen King show. Like mine, Stephen King stuff, like do that. But, um, but yeah, I, I do, I do love that about the howling man and also about the howling man. Um, it reminds me of, or it feels like that episode influenced at least uh tangentially or like thematically the writers of lost cuz it felt like a very lostian episode and i i love lost so <laughs> i'm always yeah. like looking for those little connections too i yeah in your in your background i see john Locke poking, yep. poking his head around yep. <laughs> the, the, yeah <laughs> the, yep. the man in black trying to mm-hmm. trying to escape the island you oh, know oh yeah oh yeah Oh God! Oh, right there with you. Lost. Right there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, so so that's a good one. Yeah. Any others? No, that, I think that that's that's the 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 main one. Right. We talked about we talked about the silence. So, mm-hmm. um, uh, I could I could throw another one out there. Mm-hmm. You know, I got I got the, I got the list here. Okay. Uh, <laughs> let's talk about the Night of the Meek. That's there. There's the moment. Yeah. Um. It's not my favorite moment. I just, I just uh, picked the moment. Sure. If I remember He's, correctly, did you, you and your wife reviewed it on your show? Did. And uh, yeah, I feel like, like you guys, you guys both kind of dogged it pretty hard. I think. Yeah, pro- probably. Yeah, we we get we get drunk and um, <laughs> where she's on the show, and then I have to edit a lot more because <laughs> it's not, always yeah. fun to listen to. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I actually enjoyed it quite a bit. It, it's 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 an it's an episode where I I my nostalgia didn't like it mostly mm. because of the film, uh, but it's actually not a it's not a bad episode. Art Carney's just kind of he's just a creepy Santa. Yeah, I can definitely get behind that. Yeah, I I do love how um, the <laughs> the time is so different because like uh, the kids like oh I want a gun. <laughs> And like, obviously it's like a toy gun, but I'm just like, oh, okay. Um, it's the sixties. Um, but yeah, <laughs> I got a kick out of that. But also I think just the, um, the fact that it's the only Christmas Twilight Zone episode is like, I love Christmas themed episodes and I kind of wanted to latch onto it. And for the most part, I did enjoy it quite a bit. Well, there, there's, there's an, there's other Christmas episodes, but they oh, may, they may not be direct as direct as, as Santa okay. Claus. Nice. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So just, just throw it, just throw it out there. Okay. For, not to spoil. Right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> to serve man, the food is actually uh, a Christmas ham. Um, <laughs> it says to serve 40 humans. <laughs> nice. <laughs> oh, that reminds me. I was going to ask you. Um, you saw you went to the theater for the 60th anniversary screening thing, didn't you? I did. Yeah, I did. Yeah. How did you? How did? How was your experience with that? Um, for for some, oh my, the babysitter that we had, uh, we couldn't stay there for for too long. Okay. Uh, but uh, it it was it was really cool. It was it was nice. really. I don't know if you've ever been to the theater to watch older movies oh, again definitely. on the big screen. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's 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 so unique and so 
I don't, I, I, I don't know the word for it, but I've, it's really cool. <laughs> there we nice. go. Okay. Let me, let me be verbose. It's mm. really cool. Nice. Uh, to, to see it on the big screen, mm-hmm. uh, and, and to be in a theater with other fans. Yeah. There, but before, before the, the, the screenings, they would have trivia up there. Yeah. Uh, I, I brought this up in an episode of, of this show when I relaunched it because I experienced such a, like, f- a feeling of, FOMO and disappointment because I was in, I, I went to it, I saw it and I was in the theater, but my theater had no pre-roll anything and oh. yeah, and they started it. They didn't even start it with any kind of fanfare or anything. They started it like five minutes into the first episode and the sound was off for like 60 seconds. Oh yeah. It was awful. I was like, this is really a bummer. And like, while I'm waiting in the dark theater, I'm seeing like you and uh, Craig Beam tweeting about how like, oh, we have these trivia things. And I think they mentioned your guys' names because or something like that on the screen. I'm like, oh, man. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> I, I was I wasn't going to say that I was on the big screen, well. but <laughs> you, 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 you brought it up. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, that, 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 that was cool. I'll never be on the big mm-hmm. screen again. But it was like in the in the in the audience. Mm-hmm. This is what I was gonna say about the trivia. In the audience, uh, other other folks looking at the trivia with us, and and there's there's one guy at the theater I was at, and and he was like shouting out the answers, and he knew every single one of them. <laughs> I'm like, all right, uh, don't don't rub it in, man. Yeah, uh, sure, I don't. I sure I don't know that answer. Right. Uh, <laughs> But uh, there, 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 there's some, there's some good trivia in there, and it's just nice. again, just, a, it's just an, a, an enjoyable experience to watch oh, yeah. it with others who enjoy the mm-hmm. show, which is what your listeners do with you yeah. every, every episode when you, when we record. That's what that's that's the viewpoint I like to have, um, because otherwise it's uh, people listening to me talk like and being very angry that I'm not ke- like getting the importance of certain things. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, that, that, so that was, that was fun. That was exciting. I hope they, uh, oh, I was going to say the, the jokes on jokes on you, um, cause theaters don't exist anymore. So, um, uh, yeah. Yeah. R.I.P. AMC. <laughs> right. Oh my God. I, I'm legitimately like nervous about that. <laughs> like I want them to survive. Um, that big, huge corporation. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah. So, so yeah, so that, that's cool. I'm glad we got to touch on that. Uh, do you want to run down the top six episodes of season two? Yeah. Uh, I will, I will, I will throw these out. I will throw these out there. It, it, coincidentally, we've talked about all of them already. Okay. Uh, I, I don't, I don't have them in one through six order. But they are in my top six. Okay. They are uh, they are Howling Man, mm-hmm. I of the Beholder. Uh, that one that one has a special place in my heart because uh, that's the one that uh, it reminds me of my my dad. Nice. Uh, and uh, the Invaders. That's my older brothers. Mm-hmm. Uh, it reminds me <laughs> of him. So I have that on there. Obsolete Man, which is always always such a prescient uh, mm-hmm. episode. Uh, and I, I think it's important to take lessons from that and in, 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 uh, I don't want to spoil anything about the patron stuff, okay. but my, <laughs> to the side, my question, right? Like mm-hmm. here, here, here's another example of, of something that has influenced me. Yeah. And then, uh, will the real, real Martian please stand up. Mm-hmm. And finally the silence. Nice. Gotta, gotta have the silence be the last one. Nice. That you're like, okay, cool. Brandon's done talking. <laughs> Oh no, that's great! You're carrying this. Um, <laughs> no, not that's uh, well. that, that's it. I just, I just, yeah, I just, I just, I just string string words together and they suck. So thank you, for, <laughs> thank you for having me. Uh, you're welcome. Um, so those are all great picks. Um, yeah, my six are um, an episode that we haven't talked about, um, but I was just in love with it. Um, the Odyssey of Flight Thirty Three. Oh, um, yeah. All of the like technical jargon and stuff. Like I just recently listened to your review of it. Um, I think was that episode. Did you have Will Hines on for that one? Yeah, okay. That's the one. Yeah. Um, 
And that that was a really good episode, by the way. And I I love the Odyssey of Flight 33 because A, it's time travel. B, it's it's open-ended. It's ambiguous. Like, again, they could have remade this in each iteration of it and have it be the exact same thing. Yeah. Right. Um, and I just, I love the kind of time time travel aspect and also the problem solving aspect because it's very much like it's the same reason why i love the movie gravity like um george clooney's character in gravity is completely calm and and comforting and like problem solving the entire time and like the reason why i love that is because that is what like an astronaut is supposed to be like someone who is the like top of their field and everything um or a person in space force um <laughs> It would have to be at the top of their game and everything and know everything. So the, these are just professionals trying to problem solve a problem and it's not heightened. It's not taken to a dramatic level of suspense. Um, it's just very, uh, no pun intended, grounded um, in reality. So I really enjoyed that. Um, yeah. How did you feel about Odyssey of Fly 33? Pretend that I didn't just listen to your episode. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, let's, let's, let's hope I, well, good news. I haven't listened to my episode in a long time. <laughs> Right. But, but I, I I I recall thinking that it was because uh, Rod's brother had a mm-hmm. little bit to do with the episode, right? Yeah. And and he he was a pilot, mm-hmm. and so there's there's a certain verisimilitude mm-hmm. to the episode because it is it is is based in actual pilot speak. Yeah, and and I I think I think that turns off some folks because they're like. Uh, for example, Ghostbusters, where <laughs> they 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 make up a bunch of of words and jargon, and it's like Ghostbusters. You know, it's and that it's comedy. Uh, I'll, I'll make have a different example: uh, Ant Man and the Wasp. Okay. My, my critique for Ant Man and the Wasp, which I loved, mm-hmm. was okay. You're just you're just making words up, and we don't have to have a, a <laughs> ten minute dialogue scene for you to make up words let's get back mm. to the plot um <laughs> so how how does that apply to, to, to uh to odyssey of flight 33 it 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 matters here because these are they're supposed to be professionals mm-hmm. and they're supposed to be solving a problem yeah. and, and and having that again the the real words that a real pilot in the real world would use yep. help helps that aspect and I, I think maybe one of the cr- critiques from like uh, reviewers was like oh they're just making up they're just making stuff oh, up God. <laughs> <laughs> but uh but I, I i really i really dig it about that and and having will hines on there which by the way mm-hmm. when you have when you have somebody who's really big in improv and, <laughs> and is really funny mm-hmm. i just i i hate i hate the sense that I, I want to try to be funny with them. Like, <laughs> look at me. I'm funny too, right? Huh? Huh? Uh, funny with you? <laughs> that was a, re- that was a really fun episode to listen to. And it was it, like, I'm, I'm a fan of his from, uh, he's, he's, he's been on comedy bang bang on the podcast before. And I, I'm a big fan of his from that, but, uh, even just listening to him talk about like his book and the blog and everything was just, yeah. I was like listening to, him, I was like, I am totally on, like he's very eloquently spoken about that. Um, so that's cool. Yeah. It, and that, that is a fantastic book by the way. Nice. Nice. Um, I say fantastic a lot. It turn, turns out. Hmm. I, I say fantastic a lot. It oh, turns out. Nice. <laughs> Cut it out. Fantastic nope. is my filler word. Nope, none of this is getting cut out. Um, <laughs> except for the thing I'm about to say is that it was funny because when you said Ant Man and the Wasp, there was a little ant on my microphone um, <laughs> that I flicked away. It was kind of weird. Um, oh, yeah. So, Ant- yeah. Anthony. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, okay, so then Odyssey of Flight 33, um, Eye of the Beholder, which we've already talked about. Um, and then the next one for me was Nick of Time. By the way, these aren't in any particular order. Um, Nick of Time, I just liked because it, again, ha- kind of had that, uh, grounded feel of being in reality. And like, I like those types of stories because it conveys that like, okay, anything can be in the Twilight Zone. <laughs> and, um, I liked that it was more, it spoke a lot about their relationship and their dynamic and how he needs to overcome his own weird habits and everything in order to make his wife happy and be, and live a happy life. And I was particularly 
taken by the ending where they decide, okay, we're not going to let the mystic seer control our lives, our lives or anything. Let's go and start our life together. And then you see the older couple come in after them and they're desperate for the mystic seeker to guide them and everything. It's like they just passed by like what they could have been. And I just, I love that type of story. Um, and when it's in the twilight zone. So yeah. 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 Uh, well, I, I said it was my, my bottom before. Mm-hmm. I, uh, I, I, I must have been lying at the time. That's I, fair. Because <laughs> uh, that, that, that's, that's, that's a good viewpoint of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, the older couple coming in yeah. and, it, and reflecting, this is what happens when you let superstitions take <laughs> over your lives. Yeah. Uh, you, 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 you run out of free will because you're, you're letting something, an external entity, mm-hmm. uh, control the will for you. Yep. Yep. All right. All right, yep. all right, Matt. You 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 changed my mind. I'm taking it. I'm taking Sweet. it out of the bottom two, and Sweet. I'm putting it in the middle. Awesome. That is all that I could have ever hoped for. <laughs> um, uh, this next mention for Nick of time. No. Actually, all I want to do is get Brandon to not have it in his bottom. <laughs> yeah. He did it. <laughs> nice. Did it. Um, next up again, shadow play. I just love. I love it as a concept, and the execution is great. Um. And then the other ones we've talked about, The Silence and The Obsolete Man. Um, the Obsolete Man just seriously just blew me away. And I, I honestly think that it is either exactly on par or better than The Monsters Are Due on Maple Street, which was a, an episode that just blew my mind. Um, so it's just, it's really great that like season two can still pack that big of a punch. Um, yep. so, yeah. so those are my top six. Yeah. All right. Um, okay. Yeah. Uh, so let's talk about the worst episodes of season two. <laughs> um, you Nick talked about Nick of Time. It's no longer on there. <laughs> uh, I got to delete it. Yeah. Um, what? Let Let me try to guess what your what your other two are. Okay. 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 I'm gonna guess. <sighs> static. Oh no! I, I I thought about static. Okay. But I didn't. Uh, but I didn't remember it enough to hate it. Mm-hmm. So I, I did. I didn't put it on there. And, okay. I, and I didn't. I didn't feel like I could. I could talk to it mm-hmm. to, enough to justify why I disliked it. You know, honestly, I think the reason why I thought that is I just listened to your episode about it with. Uh, I think it was David Lawler. Yeah, that's um, right. and he hated that episode, <laughs> and I think that that <laughs> colored my perception of how you might have felt about it. <laughs> um, okay, I'll go with. Uh, Mr. Dingle the Strong. Um, okay. And let's see. Um, <laughs> but. I'll do the jokey answer. Um, and 100 yards over the rim because you had to talk to me about it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was just about to say, wait, I did that one with you. That was that episode. Uh, no, but I'll say... <laughs> Um, oh, uh, uh, the lateness of the hour. Oh, hey, we got, we got ourselves a, we got ourselves a, a double on that one. Yeah. I put okay. that, I put that one on there too. Nice. Oh, that's what I was doing. I was trying to guess which ones you were doing, <laughs> which ones you did. <laughs> no, no. Well, then you, you did it. Okay. You, you, nice. <laughs> yeah. Ding, 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 ding. Yeah. Late, lateness of the hour is, okay. is one, one I put on there. <laughs> what, why, why did that one jump out to you? Why that would be a, a, bottom one just because i think it is marred by the videotape aspect of it and Mm. also it just seems it seems kind of i i want the revelation that she is that she's a a robot um and she doesn't know it um is didn't Mm. land as hard as i for me at least than than i than i think it expected to and i kind of thought maybe that would be a reason why did you, did you, I, 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 you know, I had the benefit of, of having seen it before. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I was like, it's, it's obvious that she's some kind of like a, a robot or, or not, or not real throughout the episode. Mm-hmm. Uh, did, did you get that sense? Maybe that was what kind of de- deflated it or? I don't think I did at all. I was just like, oh, okay, well, I think when it happened, it was more like, it was less of a, oh my God, she's a robot and more of a, oh, oh. duh, she's a robot. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, so yeah, I think it was kind of a mixed bag. Um, I, 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 yeah, yeah. I, 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 what kind of steps uh, jumps out at me is it's, it's kind of a, 
cruel episode. Mm-hmm. Like uh, um, uh, time enough at last. Like that's that's a cruel episode. Yeah, Wait until the hour is is kind of a cruel episode uh, because they're like ah you know we don't we don't we we want a daughter we want a daughter mm-hmm. and we want a daughter to be happy and and they turn into assholes and they make her they make her subservient to them yeah. rather than like rewiping her me- memory right you know? yeah that's and, true and, and making her a daughter again mm-hmm. instead they're like yeah fuck it we need a we need a maid <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so, sorry for cut sick oh no no it's fine uh fucking go right ahead <laughs> um <laughs> But that, that that that's what that's what that kind of throw me off. Like yeah. you know, you you're bad people, mm-hmm. and, and you and it, and it, and it's a turn too because they're they're very very loving to her the mm-hmm. entire time, and like oh no, oh don't don't try to leave, oh no, please, right? To all of a sudden to Martha, can you rub <laughs> my shoulders again? Right. You know, yeah. I will say just the the weird moans that her mother made when she when she was being massaged, like. Was uh, so so creepy to me. Oh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, just oof, yeah. Um, so that was on your list, and what was the other one? Uh, the other one that I have on there, I I do have a um, runner up, which is okay. long distance call. Oh, okay. Uh, again, like the grandma, the grandmother's an asshole. Yeah, yeah. A goat, dead, dead grandmother. You know, don't tell, don't tell mom. The yeah. grandmother. Uh, that's weird. That doesn't. That yeah. reference doesn't. doesn't I, oh, I got you. <laughs> don't tell mom the grandmother's dead. No, it's. Yeah. You're close. That's that's close <laughs> enough. <laughs> that's what, stop, stop, or my mom, my grandmother will call. My there dead. we go. Yeah. That I like that. I like that. <laughs> yeah, that that it's a that's a runner up only because okay. the grandmother's a jerk mm-hmm. and. Uh, you know, it's it's also shot in film. Yeah, I liked that episode specifically because the the idea of it, like the the kid, I thought did a really good job of being innocent, creepy, mm-hmm. and just like the idea of like, okay, this it, uh, it was just kind of creepy to me. And uh, then again, kids in general just kind of creep me out. So <laughs> that yeah. was just uh, kind of an an added bonus. I got an eight-year-old. That's that's true. They, they don't stop being creepy. <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh, but I will. I my 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 actual bottom, mm-hmm. the other bottom one. I would say is mind in the matter. Oh, interesting. Okay. Yeah. Uh, be because uh, what's I don't not books worth. Uh, I forget. Um, I I forget what his character's name is. Yeah. Isn't it? Uh, uh, Shelley Berman is, right. is the actor. It's Beechcroft. Beechcroft. There, yeah. there you go. And it started with a B. Yep. <laughs> it, 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 there, there, there's something about that episode that I don't know. It just it doesn't click for me. It's not necessarily okay. a bad episode, but it doesn't it doesn't click. Sure. And like, all that creepy uh, Shelley Berman makeup. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he makes so many of the, of the moments his own self. Yeah, that was. Is, I I really and I I really enjoyed that episode. I I liked it as just kind of a reflection of a dude being just a narcissistic person and I I thought it went to some interesting places, but it wasn't an it was a kind of a middle of the season kind of episode for me. Yeah, yeah, it, uh it it another time enough at last kind of yeah. uh kind of echo of the uh, I don't I don't care about humanity. I only want to be with myself. Right. Uh, not not to the same conclusion necessarily, but mm-hmm. um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, so I have Mister Dingle the Strong, the whole truth, and a thing about machines. Um, and I feel bad about Mister Dingle the Strong. Like like you said, I think it's kind of an easy one to pick on. Um, <laughs> but I do, I do I did like uh, Burgess Meredith in it. Um, so it did have that going for it. But I don't know. It just seemed like kind of just a meh episode. Um, and the well, whole, yeah. Well, when you when you have two uh, Burgess Meredith episodes, and one is yeah. extremely great, and then the other is right. middling. Yep, I thought yeah. you were going to say when you have one that's like extremely great, and then the other one is the obsolete man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, Mister Dingle the Strong, my my number one of all time. Oh God. <laughs> Right next to uh, the mighty Casey. Oh, yeah. 
<laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> um, yeah, how would you feel about a thing about machines? You know, uh, I'm, I'm, gl- I'm glad you brought that up because that was another one of my um, my runners up was okay. a thing about machines. Mm-hmm. Uh, not that I, I I didn't I didn't mention that when you asked me what my actual bottoms were mm-hmm. uh, because in the much in the way of static, mm-hmm. uh, I, I know more about the thing about machines, but I didn't you know I, I don't have too much of a a description for why. Uh, why, why it's on the bottom? Other than sure. to say, yeah, it's okay. <laughs> machine. I mean, the machines had a reason to be pissed off at him. I think because yeah. he, hates, I mean, he hates machines for no reason, right? He's, Just because he's a curmudgeon, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, but you know, he but he is the kind of guy who, in this day and age, would be like, uh, how do you get this? This damn Zoom call to work. <laughs> right. Yeah. Oh, look, I don't need to wear a face mask. Why can't oh, we God. just meet in person? <laughs> That's that guy. That's why I hate this episode. Oh, that is spot different. on, I think. Yes. <laughs> Good God. Yep. <laughs> oh, God. Jesus. Um, are, you, are, you, are, you guys, are you guys open for uh, in-house seating? <laughs> no, get out of here. Get out of here. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Good God! Um, and then uh, the whole truth. I I have that listed on my bottom, but honestly, I I rewatched it like a couple days ago, and I it it didn't it doesn't do anything for it. It has no lasting impression on me at all. It's just kind of a just mediocre episode to me. How did you feel about the whole truth? Well, let me just say this: what which one is the whole truth? <laughs> It's the uh, <laughs> it's the used car salesman who buys a car uh, that's haunted oh. and he can only tell the truth. It's liar liar in the '60s and a used car dealership. <laughs> that that's right. The other film one. Yep. Yep. <laughs> uh, um. Yeah. Well, uh, what is it? Gorbachev? Was it Gorbachev? Uh, Khrushchev, I think. Yeah, Khrushchev. Think, yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, my inability to remember what episode that was without you telling me that yeah. really says all there is to Yeah. To I'll agree with you there. And I I'm I'm glad that you said that because I think that part of my I wouldn't even say disdain, just my disinterest in it is because the first time that I saw it, which obviously like the whole premise of my podcast is I'm it's my first time watching it, like I took a day off of work because I had a really horrible like head cold and I just took a bunch of cold medicine and I laid in bed and I was like, you know, I'll go ahead and watch this episode before I, you know, pass out. And like, it was the most groggy, like I could not focus on anything. And like, I was like, this is my first viewing of this episode and it's going to be forever marred by this snot nose and headache (laughs) and sore throat combination. (laughs) And it it turns out, the episode gave you those things. It did. It did. Yep. (laughs) (laughs) Do, 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 do. Um, uh, Okay. Yeah. So those are our bottom episodes. So to kind of wind down, because I don't want to take too much more of your time, um, even though it's a blast talking to you. um, I, so I have a list of season three episodes that I'm looking forward to. And are there any episodes that you would say that, I should keep an eye out for or kind of point me in the direction of the episodes that you think I'll be more receptive to. Okay. All right. So, uh, I've already mentioned the shelter, Mm -hmm. uh, which is the the third episode. Uh, let's see. It's a good life is out, is out there. Mm -hmm. Season three actually has a a good handful of, of episodes, uh, episodes that, you're like, oh, oh, there's a there's a lot more um, reference uh, to pop culture. Oh, nice. In, in, in these ones too, uh, so, and I think so far I like a lot more of of season three episodes. Uh, I think season three might be one of my favorite seasons if I, if I'm looking at all these these right. Uh, Very cool. the, the dummy is in season season right. three. Uh, if you've, have you have you ever seen the Twilight Zone movie? I haven't. I I own it, but I'm waiting until I finish it because I'm insane <laughs> okay uh kick kick the can is is one of the episodes in right in season three. uh yeah there there's some there's some good stuff in here once upon a time uh the uh, 
it's it's a really good ep- I, I I like that episode a lot okay. and it's got it's got the great Buster Keaton in Ooh, it. Ooh. Uh, okay. Kind of playing up his his stardom. Nice. Okay. Wow, I'm very interested in that. Um and if I remember correctly, I have like I have mapped out like my episodes for the, the entire run of anthology anthology but like that is the exact like middle point in terms of the number of episodes of the twilight zone so like right after i finish once upon a time i'm gonna have like a special episode where it's like oh halfway through the twilight zone this is where i'm at with it and how sane i am or insane i am (laughs) so i'm looking forward to that but um but yeah um yeah i'm looking forward to all those episodes and then also the arrival um, because the show, I, from what I understand of it, it involves an airplane, and the show has yeah. had a very good run of airplane-specific episodes. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. And then uh, the other ones that you mentioned, and also Little Girl Lost, because if I'm not mistaken, I think that that was used for a Simpsons Treehouse of Horror segment, <laughs> the Did Homer you? Cubed. Huh? It was, yeah. Nice, yeah, yeah. nice. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, yeah, cool. Um, well, I think that should do it for this episode then. Is there anything else you wanted to touch on about Twilight Zone season two or my amiability? <laughs> uh, you, you are, you're extremely a- amiable oh, and thank you. <laughs> I can't, I can't, uh, as far as season two goes, mm-hmm. uh, you said, you said this earlier, uh, you, you, you think season two got, got better, uh, in, inexplicably why you don't you don't really know why you just mm. know that it's getting better right uh talking to you is much in the same way oh thank you the, the first time we talked that was all right yeah oh yeah, yeah. it was okay it was a, you know. <laughs> oh so but the more but the more we talk the 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 more i enjoy it nice well that's very nice of you thank you and i love talking to you and i especially with this podcast it's so like self-contained with just me and I get tired of talking to myself. Like the new, like kind of tagline for the show is a man in his thirties talking about a 60 year old talking to himself about a 60 year old TV show. (laughs) And uh, I love having, having you on and chatting with you and uh, having someone to kind of bounce conversations back with. Yeah. (laughs) So yeah, yeah. I, 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 I appreciate that. And it it really, I, I understand. Completely understand. I think I'm about to like do a, a solo, like, look, I'm coming back episode. Oh, nice. And I, and I, and I dread it because <laughs> when I start talking to my, when I start talking, when there's no one else, I, I just, I get, I get, I start talking faster and faster and faster because I'm like, I think I'm talking too slow. I think I, I, think, <laughs> and I run out of breath because I don't want to have there to be any silent space. I, I had the same thing L- yesterday. I recorded the next episode. Um, so peek behind the curtain. I'm, I've mentioned this before, but, uh, not to brag, but I got, well, kind of to brag because I'm really excited about it. I got screeners for the new season of the CBS All Access show. Um, what? yeah. Uh, well, it was, rub it in. I, I was uh, a little bit, but, um, to be fair, I did have to email CBS All Access like three times over the last year. <laughs> so, um, but I got, I recorded the episode for the first one, for the first episode, um, that's gonna go up on the day that it launches, June 25th. And like the whole time, it was a, it was a mixture of me being in my head. And it was a mixture of me thinking like, okay, am I talking way too fast because, I am, uh, because that's just like, am, is it just a mistake that I'm making talking too fast or is it because I'm so excited about talking about this? <laughs> um, and it was just, I don't know. I edited it today and it sounds fine. So I'm excited for it. But anyway, um, yeah, any chance that I have to, to brag, I guess. Um, <laughs> um yeah, are you going to, real- <laughs> ah, well, you know, um, <laughs> uh, are you going to cover the new series at all? Uh, yeah, 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 no. Uh, <laughs> I, I, maybe if, if I ever, if I ever get through the original series, mm-hmm. then I, I would consider it. Gotcha. Um, uh, but I, I, I feel like for, for me, covering the, the new, the new series would be a, a cop out to, to finishing what I started with, with the original series. That uh, makes perfect sense. Yeah. I, I don't, I don't want to, just for my own completionist, mm-hmm. um, it, it'd be like, "Hey guys, uh, you, you, especially for the folks who are reviewing, like, are you ever going to come back?" <laughs> right. To, to all of a sudden be like, "Hey guys, I'm back. 
but also it's uh, I'm I'm, not, I'm only talking about the, the new season <laughs> or the new series, right? Yeah. So so eventually maybe. Uh, okay. But let's get through 500 more episodes of this show first. Yeah. It's really <laughs> funny you say that because I <laughs> I'm kind of like the opposite approach to that <laughs> because <laughs> I was looking through um my files and everything and the chronology of anthology and like I was looking and a big part of the show is that I do bonus episode review series about like Black Mirror and other like contemporary science fiction shows and I was looking through and like what I do is what I usually do is I do um a regular episode and then a bonus episode and then I alternate between them and looking through my episodes I was like wow I've done a lot of bonus episode series and I looked in like I have not had a run of time on this podcast where I'm just doing the main episodes like mm-hmm. consecutively since I think it was December of 2017 <laughs> um so it's been a while and I keep adding on these damn bonus reviews and everything. Um, when I should just like sit down and do this thing that I fit, like focus on this thing that I started five years ago <laughs> that I'm only two seasons into at this point. Yeah. But, but you know, I, I think, I think what's what, what you've done is you, you've, you've established a, a kind of a, a precedent, mm. a framework for the show that you can cover you can go and, and kind of have a little bit of leeway here and there to, to cover different things here, here and there. That's for uh, S4, why I, I, it started with being like, no, we're going sequentially. Mm-hmm. We're, we're, we're doing this. Don't fill it with extra mm-hmm. any, any other. Don't, don't tread off the, the beaten path. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. And I'm glad that you said that because that, that was kind of one of the intentions with, uh, starting the podcast the way that I did. Cause like I very specifically titled it anthology because I didn't want it to be like a Twilight Zone podcast. I wanted it to be a science fiction anthology podcast. Um, and I've always said like, okay, when I finish the Twilight Zone, I'll move on to the outer limits and then other classic shows. And then like recently I've been thinking like, or after I finish the Twilight Zone, I can go back and like talk about the episodes in a different context or pair them up or do like something special. But I don't know. That's at this rate, that is literally like half a decade away from me. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. Well, so, yeah, you'll have to, you'll, you'll change your unofficial tagline to a man in his mid fifties. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Talk to myself. Exactly. Yep. Uh, all right. Well, I'll I'll let you go. Um, thank you so much for chatting with me, man. It's it's always a blast. Uh, I I really dig talking to you, and uh, it was a lot of fun to kind of recap the season with you. Um, looking forward to everything that you do, and I'm looking forward to S4YA coming back. Um, at some point. Um, no pressure or anything. I won't write <laughs> any reviews or anything <laughs> asking. <laughs> when when are you when are you releasing this episode? This episode will go up on Tuesday the twenty third. Okay, that that's June. that's when the that's when the pressure to actually uh, yeah. <laughs> produce content uh, starts. Nice. Okay. <laughs> cool. Uh, so yeah, next Tuesday the twenty third, and uh, yeah. So thank you so much for listening to us, and uh, thank you for uh, yeah. Like I said, the next episode is going to be. Uh, coming out in two days from this release, it's going to be the first episode reviewing the new Twilight Zone, and then I'm going to do just a bonus review series all about the new season of the new Twilight Zone, and then I'll resume with season three of the original series in August. Um, so yeah, so that will be fun. Um, Brandon, uh, thank you once again, and do you want to tell people where they can find you online and everywhere on the planet? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> yes. Okay, let's see apatheticenthusiasm.com for uh, submitting for your approval or apathetic enthusiasm if you're interested in me rambling on about random stuff uh you know you want to you want to know about running how i how fast i run <laughs> that's that's the kind of hard hitting content you're going to get with apathetic enthusiasm nice uh and then if you if you're a rick and morty fan please check out interventional rss the unofficial rick and morty podcast uh in the uh, so if you want, if you want to get a hold of me, social media wise, the mm-hmm. best way to do that is at Rick and Morty Pod on Twitter, uh, or at Apathusiast on Twitter. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I monitor both of those accounts. Also, S four Y A underscore Podcast <laughs> on Twitter. Uh, I, I do a lot of social media, as you, you, you understand that. So, oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. 
Rick and Morty pod. Really, that that's the easiest way. Sweet. Uh, go out there, hit hit me up. I you, you I think you can uh, vouch for me, Matt. Mm-hmm. I love I love talking to people and oh, and yeah. I love interacting. So mm-hmm. please, or just call me out for uh, hating on Nick at time. <laughs> nice. All right. Well, <laughs> you heard him. Go seek him out. Flood him with with uh, with. Uh, <laughs> talking and stuff i don't know um and uh yeah i look forward to your fourth podcast uh intellectual empathy uh super excited about that no, no. <laughs> all on. right well <laughs> that'll do it for this episode of anthology thank you guys so much for listening and i'll see you next time and now here's a short clip from our patreon exclusive rss feed to hear the full clip and more exclusive patreon content go to patreon.com slash obsessive viewer and become a patron at the minimum rate of one dollar per month thank you and enjoy the air force became its own branch in 1947 uh from uh, splitting off from the army army air corps mm-hmm. uh and in uh, throughout the career God, this is boring military talk. Uh, <laughs> throughout my career, I'd, I'd read about the history of the Air Force and how it was created and, and all these kind of like pioneers, uh, starting up th- this culture and, and, and developing this, this, this force, right? Uh, mm-hmm. yeah, air power, you know, all, all type of stuff. Yeah. And I, and I thought, you know, that's, that's actually, that's actually kind of cool to, to me to be like, if, if the Space Force stays a thing mm-hmm. and it doesn't get, uh, you know, taken out, uh, in our in the next administration i i was gonna say by aliens uh, by, by <laughs> yes 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 uh i forget will smith's name and in, uh right. independence Day. Oh, hiller yeah. yeah yeah hiller yeah. <laughs> worthless knowledge in, in our head yep. uh, anthology is edited and produced by matt hurt and presented by obsessiveviewer.com for a full archive of our episodes go to anthologypod.com slash archive you can also like the Facebook page at facebook.com slash anthologypod and follow the show on Twitter at OVAnthologyPod. If you enjoy the show, please take a couple minutes to leave us a rating and a quick review on Apple Podcasts. This is the easiest way to support what we do, and all it costs is a little bit of your time. If you'd like to donate to the podcast, you can make a PayPal donation at anthologypod.com slash donate or support us on Patreon for recurring donations and access to commentary tracks and B-roll audio recorded exclusively for patrons at patreon.com slash obsessive viewer. Every donation goes toward paying the fees to keep the podcast running and is greatly appreciated. Official anthology merch, including shirts, mugs, phone cases, and more, can be found in the Obsessive Viewer's T Public store. You can find a link to the store in the show notes of this episode and at anthologypod.com slash donate. Or you can simply search for Obsessive Viewer at tpublic.com. For information about the Obsessive Viewer's annual live event showcasing short horror films from local filmmakers, check out shocktoberinirvington.com. And for an archive of all our events, as well as news about potential future events, head over to obsessiveviewer.com slash live. For more podcast content, you can find our flagship movie and TV review and discussion show, The Obsessive Viewer Podcast, at obsessiveviewer.com, and on Twitter, at obsessiveviewer. You can also find Tower Junkies, a podcast where Matt and co-host Tiny share their love of all things Stephen King and his magnum opus, The Dark Tower series, over at TowerJunkiesPod.com and at TowerJunkiesPod on Twitter. And finally, check out The Secular Perspective, Tiny's side project podcast, which tackles current events and life's big questions from the perspective of secular hosts Chad and Amanda at TheSecularPerspective.com. Bumper music for this podcast comes courtesy of As Good As It Gets, which can be found at Facebook.com slash As Good As It Gets Band. You can also find As Good As It Gets music on Spotify, Google Play, and iTunes. Thank you so much for listening, and we'll see you next time. Kitty! (laughs) 